All right, we're gonna go through and talk about the Maximurk row unit today. Um, we're gonna look through the meter itself, talk a little bit about the seed tube and everything, looking at both what to consider as you're getting ready to go to the field this spring, put the planter in the ground, put seed in the ground, as well as as you're pulling that planter out of the field, what you need to consider prior to um, putting the planter away um, to make sure that we're, we're maintaining um, the system properly and making sure that we don't have issues next year as we go to pull this back out. Starting first with the, the row unit itself, a few um, inspection points to look at. Of course, take a look at the, the dome lid here. Uh, make sure there's no cracking holes, anything like that. This is a good place where you, um, a simple um, crack or hole is gonna, uh, it's gonna hurt you on the vacuum side. So make sure that you don't have any visible damage or wear on the lid. If necessary, replace that lid. And then as you go to the inside, take a look at this seal here. Make sure that this seal is not um, cracked or brittle um, and, and you've got good contact here. Two examples of seal options if you need to replace. The original factory seal from Deer is going to be a little bit harder of a seal. That's what's going to come with your planter. There is also a softer seal replacement option available that we recommend. Um, it's going to um, wear not, it won't have quite the wear life that the harder seal will have, but it will help to protect that investment of the seed plate. So if you do replace, we would recommend going to the softer seal, but make sure if you go to the softer seal on one row, you're going to need to do every row down the planter to make sure that you got consistent seal and vacuum um, connection throughout the planter. As we move on past the lid, of course, be sure to take a look at either your, your scraper or your knockout wheel, depending on the crop. Make sure that it's um, in good working order. Most newer units are gonna have a clip-in system where the, the scraper or the uh, wheel um, clip in. If you've got an older system that has the screws that you take those screws out um, and to put the new system in, um, you will need to update the lid because those scrapers or wheels are not available any longer. So you will need to get the new system that has the clip-in um, scrapers and wheels. Makes, makes changing out of those um, a lot simpler and a lot easier. Looking uh, further into the row unit here, of course, we start with the disc. Go ahead and inspect that um, plate for any visible damage or wear. In particular, you want to be looking for any sort of grooving around the edge of that plate that's going to help, um, that's going to take away from your vacuum. So if that you start to see grooving or ridging throughout the plate, it's going to be time to look at a new plate. We're going to tell you to go ahead and use some graphite spray lubricant, spray it around the outside of that plate where it's making connection with the seal on the dome um, to give you a good um, um, setup there as you're, as you're hitting the field. Probably wouldn't hurt as you're changing crops or once or twice throughout the season to put another um, um, dose of that spray on graphite lubricant on there as well. Looking at hub height, to change the hub height here, you pull this pin, you can adjust that hub in or out as necessary, pop that pin back in. The proper setting on this is gonna be when, uh, what Deer will tell you and your operator's manual will tell you, if you can spin that when it's disconnected from um, the, the drive system on the planter, when you can spin that hub and you get about a quarter to a half um, turn of free spin. One thing I would recommend if you're looking at smaller grains, um, you may want to make that just a little bit tighter than you would with your corn and soybeans. Of course, when we hook this planter up and you put that vacuum in there, that vacuum is going to want to pull on this plate just a little bit and pull it away. Um, so keep that in mind. If you, that pulls away and you create a gap down here, you're going to create a problem where you, you create that potential for those smaller grains um, to slip through. So it may be something to consider to tighten that up just a little bit when you get into your smaller grains. Looking further in here, um, another inspection point, of course, is to make sure that all these brushes um, are in good order, um, in good shape and everything else. Make sure that no rodents or anything have gotten in here and caused any damage. This brush back here is gonna be what's preventing any of that seed from falling back into the system. So this needs to be um, good to make sure you got good coverage there. On older row units, there will be a baffle system in here. And I can show you that here. If you've got a baffle on your system, it's a simple, you push this clip in and you can slide that baffle up or down. You're gonna want that baffle in the down position for your smaller grains and your owner's manual will, will tell you particularly what, um, um, uh, what crops you're gonna to wanna to have the baffle in the down position. What that's gonna do is that's gonna limit the amount of seed that can enter into the meter. You wanna keep that down for those smaller grains to keep less seed in here, because if you overfill this meter, it's gonna to wanna, to, uh, it's gonna to tend to pick and carry those seeds up um, and drop them back in on the backside of that meter where you don't want them. So we tell everybody, keep it in the up position for corn and soybeans, down position for your smaller grains. Look at the double elimination process on these meters. You've got this, this right here is the heart and soul of your doubles eliminator. 
to set that, most of them will have a dial on the back here. Set that dial to five, and then you're gonna to wanna to put that disc in, and the, the tip of this top uh, uh, topmost edge is what you're gonna be looking for. When you put that disc in on a corn plate, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that at this point where that uh, top tooth is, that half of that hole is exposed. There is a tool you can use to get real scientific with that, or you can use a 3 30 seconds inch drill bit, put that in the hole, and if that drill bit can just barely clear, then you're at the proper height. You can adjust that by, by backing this nut out here, getting that set so that that's when you're in position five on the turn knob, that your, your half of that hole is exposed is gonna be ideal. That'll allow you to move up and down with your settings as necessary uh, based on your conditions. We're gonna tell you to start at, at five with corn, get going through the field and adjust as necessary for soybeans, drop that all the way back down to zero and let it run. That pretty well covers the, uh, the meter itself um, and what to be considering. One thing is you're looking at putting the planter away. Of course, we're gonna want you to take those seed discs out, store those um, in a way that is, is gonna prevent any warping um, or damage to them. So don't stand them upright, resting on the bottom. We're gonna get uneven wear here. Don't lay them flat, that'll allow them to um, warp and, and kind of create a bowl-like pattern. So what we tell guys is take a dowel or something, string all your discs, um, all your seed plates on that dowel, hang them up in the shop um, to keep them up off the ground. Um, another thing you can do is, is pound some nails into the side of the shop um, and hang those up there so that they're, they're resting here in the center of the disc and not um, creating any warping or damage on the outer plate. Moving past then, of course, we got our seed tube. Um, what we're gonna encourage you to do, um, take a, a seed tube brush, get this cleaned out good, keep it clean and dry and free of debris. There is a gasket behind um, the, the sensor here. Um, if, if needed and you're having some problems, you can pop these zip ties off, replace that gasket, see if that clears things up um, before needing to look at replacing the sensor. Be looking at the bottom of the, the tube here to make sure there's not any noticeable damage. You're also gonna to wanna to take a look at the guide at the bottom of the row unit. making sure that your, your guide is, is fully covering um, the seed tube to make sure that if this guide starts to wear and you're not fully covering that seed tube, you're gonna cause damage to the tube. It's gonna brown that out and ultimately it's gonna affect seed placement down in the trench. That pretty well covers the meter and seed tube and everything else. Um, hopefully that gives you some good tips and tricks as you're getting ready to put that planter in the ground this spring and some opportunities for you to make sure that we're taking care of things um, at the end of the season before we put it away. So thanks again.